guys and welcome to the part 2 of understanding Jeppesen charts. Now if you haven't, please take a look at the first part because you will find that there are a lot of similarities between the charts covered there for uh, departure and ground and the charts we will cover now for approach and landing. So the first chart we will check out is 10-2 Golf, uh, which was published on at 2010 December the 3rd effective from 16th of December for Vilnius, Lithuania, which is the standard arrival routes chart. Below this information, just as on the departure chart, we have some frequencies. 8 is aerodrome terminal information service 1 to 5 decimal 8, elevation 646 feet, and some information. We set the altimeters in hectopascals, the transition level will be told by ATC and transition altitude is 5000 feet. Uh, well, in this case, we care more about the transition level because as we are descending, this will be the point where we switch to the QNH pressure told by the ATC. Then we have some information that non-area navigation aircraft unable to conform these stars proceed direct to initial approach fix Victor November Oscar to perform the instrument approach and uh, expect flight level or altitude by ATC. And there's some more information that pilots are requested to plan their descent to do a continuous descent approach and noise abatement procedures should be applied according to ICAO document 8168. Now below all of that we have the ICAM 2 Bravo arrival identifier for runway 20 from northwest and it says that this arrival is for area navigation with global positioning systems and VOR DME. Now this part says that we have to have precision area navigation and required navigation performance approval if the star is based on global positioning systems. The RNP1 required navigation performance means that we have to have a one nautical mile accuracy in 95% of the time. Below this we see that there is a speed restriction of 250 knots below flight level 100 or 10,000 feet. To the right we have the minimum safe altitude, the minimum altitude we should ever descend to except well, for the arrival or landing itself with the center point Victor November Oscar VOR. And below this we have the routing, the routing map. We start at Ikamo. We have the radio and distance from Victor November Oscar and the coordinates for this waypoint. From Ikamo we proceed on a heading of 149 degrees for 10.7 nautical miles to Victor India 402. We have to cross this point at or above flight level 110 as mentioned here. Thereon we proceed for 24.3 miles on the same heading towards the point cutoff which is the initial approach fix. We have to be there at or above 5000 feet with a maximum speed of 230 knots. Should required, we would also be able to hold at this waypoint with an inbound course of 136 degrees at 5000 feet. Then we have some additional information. Where is the point cutoff? That it's on a radio of 316 degrees from Victor November Oscar VOR at a distance of 13.5 nautical miles. And should required, we could make another hold over Victor November Oscar with an inbound course of 195 at 3000 feet. To the left, we have some other indication that it's not to scale, and we are used to that. And below, we have the routing, which basically says that on 149 degrees track to cutoff. This is general routing. And uh, for RNAV, we have the waypoints Ikamu, Victor India 402, and then cutoff with the altitude restrictions written here. 
Now the last thing on this chart, which we can mention, is the loss communications procedure, which is in this rectangular form. And it says maintain last cleared flight level to initial approach fix, then descend in holding pattern to 5,000 feet for instrument approach. So now let's move on to the landing charts. And here I have 11-1, which was published at 2012, January the 27th for Vilnius, Lithuania, ILS or localizer runway 02. Now in the first line we have Again, the information concerning the frequencies. We have 8 is 1258, Vilnius approach 120.7, and Vilnius tower 118.2. And below that, we have the general information for LS or localizer uh, approach. First of all, we have the frequency and identifier, India, Alpha, Victor, and the frequency 110.5. The final approach course, is 0, 1, 5 degrees. Then we have uh, the crossing altitude and height at the final approach fix, which in this case would be at distance 4 nautical miles from India Alpha Victor, and the type is glide slope. Then we have the minimum decision altitude and height for the ILS, and it says that we have to refer to minimums, which we will do a little bit later. Then we have the airport elevation, 646 feet above the sea level, and runway elevation, 594. To the right we have, once again, minimum safe altitude. Below, right here, we have some missed approach information. What do we do in that case? And a missed approach information with communication failure. Here we are told that we are using hectopascals for our pressure, that the runway elevation would be 22 hectopascals. Well, basically this means that we could use this figure for setting our altimeter to zero in the air. For example, if the runway elevation is 594 feet, uh, with the QNH 1013, if we set the QNH at 1013 minus 22, we would have an indication of zero in our altimeter. Then some information again on the transition level, which is by ATC and transition altitude at 5,000 feet. Here on the left, we can see that for the localizer approach, we don't need the DME, and that ILS DME will read zero at runway 02 threshold. On the right, and well, basically in the whole middle of the chart, we have the map. This shows that here we have four possible initial approach fixes, one being the Victor November Oscar BUR with the frequency 113.8 and Morse code identifier with DME as shown here. The other initial approach fix would be Bildi, Nilna or Epsil. And it basically says, how do we continue from that point to a successful landing on runway 02? So let's look at the approach from Bildi. We fly on a heading of 133 degrees at 2,700 feet until passing a radio of 209 degrees. And then we have some general fixes at intermediate points, DME 6.3 in the Alpha Victor, DME 4.0 in the Alpha Victor, and DME 1.0 in the Alpha Victor, and this will be used for our descent. Here we have some other lines which are for circling for the landing of runway 02, uh, circling from Victor November Oscar. So for example, from Victor November Oscar, we would continue on a heading of 174 degrees until DME 9.9 .9 Victor November Oscar and then do a turn to the right and established on the localizer runway 02 on a course of 015. Now right here we can check how does the holding look like over Victor November Oscar uh, which would be an inbound course of 015 degrees at 3000 feet 
and now below all the maps we have some altitude information. This would, we would look at this if we had the glide slope out. We would, uh, we would be doing the localizer approach. So for example, at India Alpha Victor DME of 6.0, we should be at 2,560 feet. At 5.0 miles, we should be at 2,240 feet and etc. Now below this, we have a graphical display of the descent which, if we look from here, basically shows that we should be flying on a 3 degree glide slope on a course of 0 0.15 degrees towards the runway threshold. And we can see some points for our missed approach. At DME 1.0 in the Alpha Victor, we would have the minimums point where we would decide whether to continue the approach or abandon it. Or this would most likely be in the localizer case. And then, again, the information that this is a runway 02 with an elevation of 594 feet above the sea level. Below this, we have the ground speed versus our descent vertical speed on the 3 degree glide slope. Basically, if our ground speed would be 100 knots, it says that we have to be descending at 531 feet per minute. Missed approach point at DME 1.0 in the Alpha Victor or DME 1.9 Victor November Oscar is also presented here. On the right we have the lighting information which we talked about in the first part of this video. And then we see that in the event of missed approach, we climb to 3,000 feet on a heading of 015. Below this, we have the minimums. This is for the straight in landing runway 02. On the left, we have the ILS and minimums for different categories A, C, B, D. For example, for category A, the minimums would be. 804 feet above the mean sea level and 210 feet above the ground. And below that we have some additional RVR minimums concerning the instrument lighting system. And below that we have some RVR limitations considering the lighting system of the runway. To the right we have the localizer approach minimums with the decision altitude 1,020 feet above the sea level and decision height 426. And again, some limitations concerning the lighting system. On the right, same thing, minimums for circle to land. And we have some additional information that for category B and C, it's not authorized to fly northwest of the airport in sector 270 degrees to 360 degrees and minimums would go with the speeds. For example, if our maximum speed is 135 knots, our minimum descent altitude is 1,150 feet, minimum descent height 504 feet, and meta meteorological visibility 1,600 meters. So now let's move on to another chart, which will be 13-1, published on 2012, January the 27th, for Vilnius, Lithuania, VOR runway 02. Now, I won't go into much detail about this chart because basically the presentation is very much the same as the ILS approach chart or as any other approach chart, but there might be some minor differences and I will try to cover them. So, in the top line, again, we have the frequencies below that. VOR identifier, Victor November Oscar, its frequency, final approach course, minimum altitude, decision altitude and height, approach elevation, runway elevation. Then the information about missed approach. On the right we have minimum safe altitude for descent. Again, that we use hectopascals, runway elevation is 22 hectopascals. Transition level is set by the ATC and transitional altitude is a fixed 5,000 feet. 
Now we have some information that the DME is required right here. And basically below that we have the general map for the approach. Again, if we, con if we would continue from Bildi, we would fly 135 degrees, 2,700 feet. And at DME, I'm sorry, at radial 212 from Victor November Oscar, we would turn left to a course of 023 towards Victor November Oscar. No doubt, a different from the ILS, but on different non precision approaches, this might be common that the approach course will not be the same as the runway course, as you can see from the small angle here. And what we can see here is that from DME 1.9er, we would really continue visually towards the runway. This would be our minimum point. So again, here we can see the DME versus altitude, the same as the, on the ILS chart. The graph for our descent, that we start descent from DME 7.2 with a three degree glide slope. And uh, we would monitor the descent according to the table I showed you just a little bit earlier with the DME versus altitude. Then around the graph we have again some information that we start from VOR at 3000 feet on a heading of 182. Should this be the case for our approach? Uh, we would have the runway 02, runway elevation 594. Again, we have our approximate uh, vertical speeds for a given ground speed. So if we have 140 knots, our speed of descent would be 743. And that our min missed approach point is at DME 1.9. Again, we have information about runway lightning, about the information about the missed approach that we continue to 3000 feet via Victor November Oscar on radio 023. And below that, again, minimums. Minimums uh, in the vertical sense, decision altitude 1030, and minimums in the horizontal sense concerning the lighting systems. If all is working, the RVR is 1300 meters. If the approach lighting system is out, we would have a, an RVR of 1,500 meters for category A and B, and RVR of 2,000 meters for category C and D. And again, minimums for circling to land. So, this basically concludes our second video of understanding Jefferson airfield charts. I really hope that now you really have a good idea about what is written there, what is shown there, and uh, how to follow the procedures and how to read the charts. So thank you very much for joining me. See you in the next videos. Bye. Bye.